Hey Hi friends. friends, it's almost the 4th of July. It sure is, and we look like Christmas. We now, today we do, today this we is a like red Christmas. dress indeed. Yes, um, I was just telling Caroline, you know, it's crazy because we record this at 3.30 Central Time here in Houston, Texas, and it's kind of right in the middle, I mean, it is right in the middle of our day. Yeah. Of trying to do the news things yep. for our 5 p.m. news. So I was trying to get off the phone with a story that I'm working on. I know you just did an interview. I just did an interview so and I was trying to look ahead to the five o'clock news so that I was like a little bit up to speed yes. after we get off this show because after we get off Carolina Rashi, it's a it's one hour of complete like just, just in the five rushed. If we have to like mm -hmm. do anything else for the five, we, have, we just have I mean, it, it all happens right there. Yes, just found There's out there was no like There's no time an, for a Starbucks run or anything. No, if one of us goes, <laughs> we'll be like, hey, do you want something? Um, but no, but it's great because we're just so passionate about the show. So this is just kind of a relief. It's It really yeah, is. Some days the show comes together easier than other days. Yes. Sometimes we're like, ah. Oh. I know. We're like, but today was, pretty, today was fine. Yeah, no, today is fine. And honestly. But it we, had to be fine because we were so busy before. Right. So it was kind of like, okay, just. But if we didn't even have topics of it, we would just chat and it would be Oh, fun. I could sit and here and chat like with Rashi for two hours yeah. with no topics. Right. It would, and you guys, I, we need to figure out a way. We've been talking I about know. it to interact. We really do. We keep saying it and then it's like. Well, we need to get the training done so that we can get on We want to maybe go live on um, the TikTok account or the Instagram account, mm -hmm. Fox 26, yes. and like answer your questions there, which would be fun. Like in real time, yeah. which would be really nice. Maybe Rashi so, can help us with that. Yeah. Our, social media guru. So what we do is during the um, broadcast, the 5, 6 p.m. broadcast, and then the 9 and the 10, we, which I just found out I'm doing the 6 p.m. also today. Because, what? Yeah. Oh no, was that a last minute change? Was not, yeah, but I'm- um, oh, I would have done it. Do you want no, me to No, no, it? it's totally fine. I'm just saying that I don't, some days Aji, who's our social media producer, he'll um, pick days to where we are live on Facebook, live on TikTok, live on yeah. Instagram. But if you're working on that other story, I can. No, no, no. That's, okay. it's not okay. like a, no, it's, um, I just needed to set up. Some, okay. Anyway. <laughs> We're fine. We're fine. But I appreciate it. Um, so we, anyway, yeah, we do like these behind the scene lives, but we want to do them for, for us. Rashi. That way you guys can tune in and ask us questions live on, like we should even mic Aji up. Yeah, and would be so great. And this, he could just read the questions. But the, this is like the perfect opportunity to do those lives. I am just speaking for me only oh, when yeah. I say I don't like doing the lives during the newscast. I know because we right. have a lot going on. Yes. It's just you're you're talking about a 12 year old who was just found in the bayou. But then you're like, hey, guys, be sure to join us. And so it is like and then people are asking me constantly about which I love. Don't stop asking. But I love it. They're asking about my outfit, my shoes, mm -hmm. my hair, my nail color, where I got my watch band, my earrings, my necklace. Like any non-serious question is coming through the social media lives, yes. which I love. I, I love it. But when you're talking about this stuff, I'm like, I can't really be telling well, you guys like where I, different things. yeah, it's and completely different. So in a setting like this, it it's would be perfect. fun because it's so be much like, more okay, relaxed. Yeah, and what were you? And then here's the other thing, friends, let's just think we're talking to you guys, right? Then we have a camera that's like the TikTok camera here. Then we have a camera that's the Instagram. Or the YouTube. Or the YouTube one. Yeah, YouTube. And we're trying to answer both questions. And we know which one is which because the YouTube goes sideways. The TikTok goes up and down. We have up then on our phones and our computer. Like if we're streaming on both, I'll be monitoring questions on the YouTube, on my computer at the desk, and then on my phone on TikTok plus being in the rundown of the show, plus sometimes getting ready to anchor another show. So that's like 16 million things going on at once. Like I would say one thing about journalism is if you can't multitask, like this is not the career for you because I it mean, involves high level multitasking. I mean, I think that's journalism now. Journalism, journalism now, or, new age journalism, yeah. Or just television. One and time when I was in MMJ, a multimedia journalist, meaning I had my own camera, my own tripod, my own gear that the station provided. And then we had a little live backpack and then I had my cell phone. There was one time when I was asked to go by myself, shoot a package at the same time as do a Facebook live stream and do a live shot for the 6 p.m. news. I was like, I don't have eight hands, no, no. one person. So I'm either shooting the story, I'm either yeah. doing the Facebook Live, or I'm either doing the live shot for the six o'clock news. Right. And l I kid you not, this was not at the, this was not here at Fox 26. All the managers looked at each other and they were like, "Oh, good point." <laughs> <laughs> it's 
sometimes <laughs> like the everything they wanted me to do was happening at an event at yes. one time and i was like so which one do we want <laughs> yeah it's 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 crazy but sometimes you just have to remind yourself you are not a robot and you have to just give yourself grace i mean i was picturing myself like okay i'd have to have like six hands but here's the thing is like you're just trying to impress your boss and do what you're told to do but the ask is like uh, not possible with the amount of limbs that god's given you sometimes and especially sometimes i know <laughs> no like if if you are working as an mmj yeah and so you're shooting the story and getting the content and they want you to live update on social media again that's a situation where you're one person so it's like do you want the update well, or do you want the content? The, at some point, you have to be like, I can only it's do It's crazy. So much. It's so crazy. Luckily, yes. like a lot of our um, reporters work in teams here, especially mm -hmm. for breaking news. Mm -hmm. So that gives them help. But in smaller markets, it's, I mean, it was wild. Yes. I was always messing my neck up carrying all my gear. Oh, yes. I, I remember those days. Oh, gosh. It was, it was so crazy. It was really bad. And, and we had the big cameras. I don't know if you had a big camera. Oh, no. I had the MMJ no, cameras. No, no. I had the big one with no the truck. way and the thing was that i could never like my nails always were short because I, it would get yep. like stuck in the yeah. tripod and then um, it was a lot of moving around which i did like about that mm -hmm. because it was like i would go work out in the morning and then i'd get like a second workout carrying my gear and like moving yeah. around shooting which was like i mean for like a health thing i liked it but right. it was exhausting right. like sometimes i would get done with work and feel like i had a whole other workout Oh, definitely. But it wasn't a workout. For, I was just trying to balance, like, because it was yeah. so, like, so heavy. There was, like, one picture that I had from early on in my MMJ days, and I know it was super early on in my career, because I was wearing heels. Oh, yeah. I never wore heels. In no. no. No, I no. shortly after that would wear, like, what, you know, like, dress and tennis shoes mm -hmm. or flats or, like, something that, like, I could move around yes. in. And then if I needed the heels, I would I'd yeah. have them, like, in my bag or something. But I would be going to pay less. Yeah. No payless. Yep. Are there still paylesses here? Anyway, I got payless shoes because I mean it's a great bargain. Yeah. You know, or just like any of the flat shoes. Well, sometimes you get out to a scene and you, like you never know what you're gonna encounter as a reporter. Like you might be set and scheduled to go like interview city council members mm -hmm. and the mayor, and then you're literally like out in a field at some tragedy breaking news, and you're like in the mud, and it's it's so wild. So you yeah. have to like wear something that works in multiple situations, which is. I wore black jeans a lot. Yes, me too. Yeah. I wore black jeans, black pants, the mm -hmm. editor pants at Express. Oh, yeah. I wear those because I used to work at Express, so I knew about all the. That's actually mostly was my clothes back in my beginning days, mm -hmm. too. I was obsessed. Yeah. I haven't shopped there in so long. And they're closing a lot of their stores. They are. So you. Crazy. Yeah. I have, like, every yeah. single picture of me MMJing I have on Express clothes. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I have That's Express, hilarious. like, yeah, pants and um, shirts, shirts. Yeah. And I would do sometimes, which would be horrible, when I was MMJing, if I did wear, like, a pencil skirt, I ripped so many of them up the back because you're trying to, like, get different angles oh, yes, and, like, yes. you're bending down and whatever, and, like, the seam would rip up the back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was so embarrassing. So many things that we've one done. One time, like, one lady was, like, Ma'am, excuse your I was like, there's literally nothing I can do about it. I know, at this you're point. just in it like, and you're like, there'll be so many it. people that would see me and be like, oh my God, how's a little girl like you carry all that equipment? It's like, <laughs> or when they don't realize you're going live because you're standing there with like, just your camera and your tripod set up like this with your microphone or whatever. Nobody knows, like, nobody knows that, that that's how you go live off this little backpack. Mm -hmm. And they're like trying to, and you're like, I'm about to be live. Yes, I'm about to, and yes. they just don't get it, right. and then they think you're just like talking to nobody. I know it's it's a whole thing. What what an experience! What an experience! Wow. When we're like, super do you ever miss old. those days? You know, I really do, and this is gonna sound so mature, but I really do appreciate that. I appreciate those it too. hard times. Like that experience has molded me to who I am today, and I'm happy about that because I can empathize and sympathize with reporters i know what they're going through mm -hmm. and also if you put me out there i can i can do it yeah and i think one of my favorite though parts of the job which you don't get to do whenever you are an mmj if you're working with a really good photographer as a reporter mm -hmm. and a photographer team 
when you're an MMJ, you are alone, solo, no photographer. But when I would get to work with a photographer and now when I work with a good photographer, yes, like that creative energy is unparalleled. It's Huge. so fun. It's like, all right, you stand there, I'll shoot here, I'll fly the right. drone or right. I'll like get the GoPro and like you're coming up mm -hmm. with all this creative stuff. Like I got a shot of this and like, ooh, did you get a shot of that? Like it's so fun when you have yes. like a good team. Like I really do. That's like what I really loved about this yeah. career. And no, I think it's, it's so fun when that happens. Yes. That doesn't always happen though. But I think it's it's great. The only thing I would change is I would just wish that my husband, my now husband, um, but like at the time we were long distance for four and a half years. So I would just yeah. wish that we didn't have that long distance because mm -hmm. that was- That's tough. That was Crazy. tough and I missed him so much. But, um, but during the time that, you know, also, he was able to just concentrate on his work. And I was, you know how much yep. you have to concentrate on your work. So it wasn't like, okay, dinner's at six or, you know. I know. So anyway. And it can be and like whenever you are trying to keep a relationship going, like mm -hmm. it can't, I'm not saying it's a distraction, but it, it can be. like Yeah, especially like in the early, I mean, it's like you can compare it to obviously we're not saving lives here, but like getting your residency done or something and becoming a doctor yeah. because you really need to concentrate. I mean, and the other person has to understand that this is going to take up most of your time mm -hmm. and energy. Now it's not guaranteed that you're going to come out winning. Yeah. Right. You, you could, I mean, I've been at the brink in this career multiple times me too being completely like burned out and yep. frustrated and yep. like, I don't know and then you kind of think like okay well it's in my own hands like it's up mm -hmm. to me where I go from here at this mm -hmm. point and you have to make that choice and yes. so it's worked out up until this point but it's crazy it is crazy you have to it really is. want it but you just even like you've only you've been here I say only just comparable to like how long I've been yeah here, but, you know a year and a half right yep so but like taking that leap of faith a year and a half ago you didn't know anybody. Mm -hmm. You didn't know. No, what and this Houston was, going was to like do. never right. really like a place that I even. Right. Like you always, as a journalist uh, in local news and local broadcasting, you always look at the top 10 mm -hmm. news markets. And I feel like I'm a pretty intuitive person and I would have never seen Houston coming. Right. Ever. Right. Like I grew up in like outside of Pittsburgh. So looking at top 10 markets there, that's like Philly and New York City yes, yes. and. Chicago, I was not expecting Houston at all, but it's like, I feel like there was a reason that yes. I'm here and I love it and yes. I like get to work with you and yes. so many great people. So, you know, everything works out, but it's not like I was anticipating this mm -hmm. or even could have foreshadowed this happening. Right, but also like that stretched you, that was so out of your comfort zone that now- Well, so was California. Forward, yeah, I moved from Youngstown, Ohio, mm -hmm. my little hometown market, nice and comfortable living at my parents' house. Yeah. To move across the country in the pandemic. So it's like, I didn't see that coming either. So life right. is just wild. But you just have to trust it. And now you're like confident enough to do anything, go yeah. anywhere. And it's just like, you know, sky's the limit. I know. I'm sure you didn't see College Station and Corpus, Corpus and Christi. No. How crazy. Yeah. No, it's, uh, I think my biggest, my biggest jump was being by myself in college with being in London by myself. That oh, was that's hard. crazy, yeah. That wasn't hard. What I mean is like, that was hard in terms of like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? Yeah. But it was like, it was a great experience. That though. is that is so insane. We right. haven't even gotten to our no. topic. All right, yet. let's so jump into we, our, should we take should a we break? Even, should we take a break? Yeah, let's take, we'll a take a break <laughs> and then we'll come back. Okay, bye.
All right, new data suggests Instagram may be the best social media platform to get you in touch with your airline. The social media customer engagement platform, Amplify, revealed 27% of customers who took their travel concerns to Instagram received answers. More than a half of the comments carried a positive sentiment. Travel experts say it's a good idea to take the throw everything at the wall approach, meaning you should just reach out on social media and pressure some uh, some form of in customer service. If you're in a situation where you need answers, also hit them up via phone. However, on their website, if there's a chat, just throw it all at the wall. Maybe they'll get back to you on social media. This also worked for me with getting in touch with my cell phone carrier, T-Mobile. Funny how if I message them on Twitter, they're responsive, but like I can't get a hold of them otherwise. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I have had multiple instances and I can't remember because it's been a while where I've reached out on Twitter mm -hmm. and they're very responsive. Yeah. I've never done it on Instagram though, but our general manager has like blasted people on Instagram on his Instagram and then said like the airlines got better or something so I was but then I didn't think that that was like professional in our eyes so I just didn't well, I just know, didn't know I mean I would never do it on Instagram because I think the way that we are we are looked at is we be scrutinized by it yeah no I, I worry about that too but I think sometimes it, it's all about like how you phrase it so if I was like hey guys I'm out here on my Instagram story and I'm going to put a little response thing. Have you guys had issues getting in touch with whatever airlines? Cause I'm stranded in an airport. Yes. That's and true. you know, yeah, it's right. like, then that kind of becomes a news story. It's like, right. Yes. Or, Hey, do this, try right, this right. and get some help. But like, I always worry about that stuff too. Yeah. But you couldn't be like, Hey, at American airlines, thank you for doing blah, blah, blah. Cause then that yeah. would be looked at as like, yeah, but I've seen people do that at our place recently. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. We'll be right back.
were just talking about our past crushes yeah. since like kindergarten. Literally, I can name actually from preschool pretty much almost every grade what boy Me I had too. a crush on. And mine was like always like a Hispanic boy. It was crazy that I was, and then but I never dated anyone Hispanic until I met I you. definitely had a type. Like yeah. I, I feel like even when I was like that little, mm -hmm. it was like going for somebody that was like the more athletic type mm -hmm. of guy where yes. like my sister went for like the skaters, punk oh, rock kind yeah. of a vibe, you yeah, know? Like yeah. she always did. All her crushes are kind of that vibe. Oh, wow. But she did date a football player and they mm -hmm. were so cute together. Really? They were like a couple you would see in a movie. And I Aww. told her her freshman year in high school, I was like, that kid is so cute. She's like, him? And then they really? dated and they were like, their prom pictures, I'm just Aww. like, oh. They were both That's blonde. Awesome. Like he's like big and muscular. Oh, really? She was like on the dance line. I was like, oh my God, this is so not her type, Aww. but I love it. That's great. She went back to like her type after that. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know what my sister's type is. We're all trying to <laughs> Yeah, I just think when I was, I think when I was younger, I had a type. Now, no, I, I don't think I have. I think like someone who golfs is my type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and that's that's a wide mm -hmm. array of people. Mm -hmm. It fits Connor. Right. But a lot of people golf. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, as long as you golf. We're good. And like. We're good. Have a career. Yes. We're okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? It's a common issue that many parents face. I face this as well, especially over the summer. It is. The struggle is real, let me tell you. Kids spending their time scrolling through social media. Okay, mine do not have access to social media. Right. I'm just, they scroll through YouTube kids. Yeah. So experts say too much screen time and certain social media algorithms are hurting their mental health. But states like New York are fighting back. State lawmakers passed this legislation to force major social media platforms to make changes. So instead of algorithms deciding what kids see, companies could be forced to display content to younger users in chronological order. The platforms could also be banned from sending kids alerts late at night unless parents sign off on it. Why would you get alerts late at night if you're a kid? That's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. I was actually just talking to you, like, what are you going to do, like, with your kids when mm -hmm. it's time for them to get a phone? And, like, I was thinking about it just, you know, one day if I have kids, what am I going to do? And this really, it can seem overwhelming. And yes. I think you have to, like, what you said, kind of come up with a plan and execute that plan yes. and just like try to teach them the best way possible and mm -hmm. put parameters around yes. the phone use. I mean, if I was a kid and had a phone and like my parents were like, you have to charge it in the kitchen, I would mm -hmm. be so annoyed, but that's what I would do for my oh, yes. future kids. Yes. Like you can't have it in your room at night. It right. has to be out on the charger or whatever. Right, I would right. be so annoyed, but it's like when you see stuff like this and just different things that we cover, mm -hmm. you know, bad things that happen when kids end up connecting with people they should oh, it's online awful. and just awful. the whole ripple effect of yes. it. It's like, all right, yeah, I'm going to be that annoying parent one you, day. You And it's annoying now, but it's going to save your kid later. Yeah, and I've heard like other parents talk about different instances. So I'm just trying to like, take it all in and learn from what they're saying. And then one day, I guess, formulate my own plan. Yes, I mean, that's the best way to do it. I think for me personally, one of my best friends, her kids are older than, I mean, she has three kids and one of them's like 10, I think, the other one's eight. Anyway, she's ahead of me. So I, that, yeah. she's the one that told me about the contract with her. Yeah, daughter. I like that. Yes. Because I like that she's still allowing them access yes. to a phone, yes. access to social media, She's savvy, so probably teaching them mm -hmm. what's appropriate and what's not when it comes to social media, including yes. like messaging with different people and everything. And I think that that's so important. I think that's almost more important to teach social media literacy than to mm -hmm. just like bar them from it because then once they do get on there, they're gonna go nuts. Right, and, and I think that giving them parameters but then letting them go at a certain age yeah. is very healthy because like my parents were super strict with me when I was growing up, so when I had the opportunity a little bit for some freedom, I was, Ooh, you know, yeah. I rebelled. And so I don't want that to happen. I just want the fundamentals of the kids knowing that I trust them. I want the best for them. Yeah. And I have to keep reminding yeah. them, especially like Ryan right now. Totally. Just why would I, I well, would never want to harm you. And I, I yeah. hurt you, you know? And as he gets older, like, I mean, at least what my parents did was like, because um, once you get older and you mm -hmm. start going to like friend's house and yeah. whatever, one thing can lead to another. You can end up somewhere where you're not comfortable with. It was always like, you can call us at any time. Yes. No questions asked. Right. We'll come get you. Um, you're not going to get in trouble. We'd rather you be like mm -hmm. safe than not. So I feel like I would carry that over. Just like different things yes. that you learn like yes. to formulate your own plan. But you definitely should have 
I mean, I'm not a parent yet, but I'm already stressed about that. Yeah, and Don't monitoring be that it's, one day because it's a lot. I think that there is um, a lot of uh, what am I trying to say here? Like, I think there's a lot of value of you not being a parent yet and seeing taking it all in. Right. Yeah, for sure. Because versus younger parents who haven't seen that yet and so they're still kind of learning you yeah, already have that true. knowledge and now you just need to <sighs> one day but i did appreciate my parents being like so cool like yes. you can just call us be open you're yes. not gonna get in trouble as long as you're safe like and smart and so. just like i have my best friend that i look up to if you find my parenting skills or something that jive with yours then i be right there. I love it. Yeah, I'm just, I'm taking it all in, Take but it, it all seems in. like a really stressful job. So parents, you're doing a great <laughs> job. <laughs> we got this guys. Yes. Well, thanks so much for watching another episode of Caroline and Rashi. Happy 4th of July. Be safe. Keep an eye on the weather because we have hurricane barrel mm -hmm. barreling towards uh, our direction. So keep up with Fox 26 on Fox local and our, all of our news apps and weather apps. That's right. We'll see you later. Bye, Bye friends. friends.